folks home and said, John, take care of my mother. Set up a prayer room, prayed for his enemy. And one night, June 21, 1976, after being fingerprinted and picking up a mattress and a tin cup, I did not know when I went to jail that second time what I was going to face that night. You know, the Lord has a way of just keeping things from you till you meet Him. And that night, actually, I believe was the most severe crisis of my life. If ever there was a time when uh, Brother Olaf uh, was afraid, I was frightened at 2 o'clock in the morning. I was literally afraid. When, and the devil used three radios with rock and roll going to the top of their sound. I thought at 10 o'clock when they racked us up and I was on the sixth floor in the third bunk in this cell, I thought, now everything's going to get quiet. Man, I can meditate a little bit, you know, and, and think about everything. And But that night at 10 o'clock, brother, they never cut the radios off. And uh, what was uh, putting some of them to sleep was keeping me awake. I had not slept a wink. And really, the devil made an attack that night uh, that I've never faced before or after, and that's the attack on my mind. You know, these are days of great mental stress. But the Bible said, Thou keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because it trusteth in thee. But brother, when you get in a place all by yourself, and I didn't have my coordinator there, they called him Brother Cameron, and I didn't have anybody else. There wasn't another Christian that I knew or that I could pray with. And the devil got bold enough to say, I'm going to get your mind tonight. And, and he just seemed to make it so plain, my imagination or not. He said, I'll have you on the seventh floor of Memorial Hospital in the morning. And you're going to go to the fellows that you never did want to go to, and that's psychiatrist. And they may put you uh, in a straight jacket, a chemical straight jacket, and you're going to have to have help for your mind tomorrow. Now, brother, uh, I'll admit that my mind was a little fuzzy. I'll admit that I was a little dazed and that rock and roll, I couldn't. Brother Cameron brought me my earmuffs and I put them on my ears and I still couldn't hold them. And finally, I just rolled off of that when, when the devil made such a bold introduction as that and promised as that, I fell down on the concrete. And I, more than any time of my life, I cried unto the Lord. I mean, I didn't say my prayers. I didn't say, if it be thy will. Be. Oh, no, brother, it's too serious. I mean, I couldn't beat around the bush. I had to get the, I had to get through. And so I said, Lord, have mercy. Don't let the devil get my mind. And I cried and wept. And I hugged this old book right here. Yeah. I said, you, I, I just said, Lord, how can I ever preach that verse again? God has not given me the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And would you believe, really, this is the truth? The Lord said, I'll tell you what you do. Two o'clock in the morning, he said, won't you sing to me? And I said, sing? That boy had so much competition. The radio right next door. He said, you can sing louder than that. And sure enough, the Lord picked out a stanza that came back to me today, and I sang it down the intercoastal canal, walking the beaches. But I had not known for many years when sin stricken, burdened, and weary from sin I longed to be free. There came to my heart the sweet message, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. My grace is sufficient for thee. Yes, my grace is sufficient for thee. In shady green pastures or on the rule of sea, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. Now listen, the Lord lifted my burden right there. I got up off of my knees. 
I leaned against my prison door, and the thing came open. I mean, it just opened up. They just didn't do a good job of racking me up. And now, don't just a floor too long, because I wasn't going very far. There's too many locked doors, but at least I got out in the main, and I started walking. And my black neighbor, he said, Brother Roland, is my radio bothering you? And I said, a little bit it is, sure enough. And he said, I'll cut that thing off. And I tell you what, the Lord came to visit with me that night. Folks, there's nothing that ought to make a Christian quit. There's no, there's no, there's no Bible recipe. If you quit, you'll quit without the leadership of Christ. If you quit, you'll quit out of the will of God. God never told anybody how to quit. And as we close, I say, sinner friend, you have no bright future without Christ. In fact, there's no future at all. Many did not get to sing and to give their testimony, but I think one of the songs that would be our testimony would be this for all these boys and girls and men and women. Hundreds and hundreds of them are here tonight that have been saved and delivered. Out in this audience tonight and out in the audience of the churches across this nation, there are people that are defeated by dope and cigarettes and liquor and sin and sodomy. Jesus will deliver you from everything if you'll put your trust in him. Like a bird out of season, I've taken my flight. Like a blind man that died, he goes back his flight. Like a poor wretched beggar, that's unfortunate and pain. I'm so glad that I found that he would bring me out to his holy name. Thank, thank God I am free. the person in the audience that didn't see the work of grace on the faces and hear it in the voices. Did you know that one year ago, most of these people were defeated and in sin and in trouble? That's right. right. Amen. Mothers and dads and friends out yonder somewhere in the churches and preachers, I want to say something as I close. I've been called the champion, the giant, the hero and all that, Kentucky Colonel giving the keys to the city and all that. Dear friend, that's just like putting, and I appreciate it, but that's like putting flowers on my grave. You hear me tonight? What we need to do, build some homes and do for others what we've done for them. Let's stand together. Our Father, as we come to the close of this glorious night, really, we had more than we could get around to of good things tonight. No way to eat all on this smorgasbord board table that's been put on it tonight. But we thank you for these precious ones that have come. And Lord, it's not just going to be worth it all when we get to heaven. It's worth it all right now. And Father, I'm going to ask you right now to touch 6,000 friends or preachers that would be willing to share a gift of $90 a month, which would be the 6480000 which would take care of a 1000 instead of 500 build $2 million worth of buildings a year, and would give $2 million for the radio ministry to tell the people about it. Lord, bless the desperate one that called a moment ago, for we came, saying our little girl 
is expecting and wants to come to Bethesda home. And Father, let us know how we've been run out of Texas and out of Kansas and out of Georgia and then over to Mississippi. I'm thankful, Lord, you didn't let us quit. We're thankful, Lord, that Jesus set no example for anybody to quit. And we praise thee for thy wonderful goodness.